This is In The Loop, I'm Christian Bryant. We love a deep dive and we assume you do too. If so, you should stick around. We got a little something lined up for you. Throughout the pandemic, many of us remember waking up to see those stimulus checks hit our bank accounts. And for a lot of people, that money was essential to just making ends meet. A census data report shows that two rounds of stimulus checks lifted 11.7 million people out of poverty in 2020. But as more people got vaccinated and started going back to work, the government stopped giving out stimulus checks and has been steadily rolling back other pandemic era benefits. The Urban Institute used census data to make poverty projections for 2021 and found that stimulus checks, unemployment benefits, and SNAP had the greatest impact on pulling people out of poverty. The study notes that these benefits were helpful to people who lost their jobs during the pandemic and for people who were employed, but who would have fallen below the poverty line without the safety net. Some people even saw their income rise to above pre-pandemic levels. But now that the pandemic safety net is ending, what impact will that have on people relying on that help? We sat down with one of the researchers who worked on that Urban Institute report, Laura Wheaton, to talk about the projections. I was initially really um astonished at how low uh, the uh, projected poverty rates uh, are. Um, so we, our projected uh, 2021 rate is 7.7%. Comparing that to 2018 before the pandemic, uh, we have an estimate of 13.9% of people in poverty. When we look at it and we see in, in terms of, of, of the increase in the amount of benefits that are flowing to families, then that really low poverty rate isn't so surprising. Economic research firm Moody Analytics reported in October that working and middle-class households have gained excess savings amounting to nearly $500 billion. This equals about $10,000 per person, but that same analysis predicts those savings will be spent by the end of this year. When we look in 2018 at what an average um, family living below poverty would receive in the government benefits that, that we're counting in, in, in our estimate, uh, they, they would have received on average uh, about uh, $5,700 a year. Then if we look at that in 2021, that goes up to almost uh, 14000 uh, Benefits like the CDC eviction moratorium ended in August. It was effective in reducing the number of evictions normally filed by about half, according to Princeton University data. In the three months following the moratorium's end, eviction cases filed increased by 20% more than the last three months the moratorium was in place. And on the horizon, federal student loan payments will start back up again in February after due dates were paused way back in March of 2020 with 0% interest rates. A recent study from the Student Debt Crisis Center found that 89% of full-time employed borrowers say they are not financially secure enough to start making payments again. One of the only pandemic safety net benefits that is still in place is the child tax credit. That's set to expire at the end of the year, but could be expanded by President Biden's Build Back Better program. Census data shows that not every family has reportedly used the funding for school expenses or childcare costs. Four in 10 households use the first three checks to pay off debt. The standard kind of parts of the safety net, uh, including their expansions, they brought poverty down uh, to levels uh, pretty similar uh, to where they were in 2018. And then when we placed the stimulus checks of the advanced child tax credit on top of that, that drove the, the poverty um, estimates even well below where they were prior to the pandemic. There's a chance there could be more relief on the way if the Build Back Better plan makes it through Congress. The goal of the plan is to expand the nation's social safety net by investing in childcare, healthcare, and climate change, among other things. But as things stand now, the pandemic era safety net is being pulled out from under millions of Americans, even as many people still haven't regained their financial footing. One area where the American economy has seemed to find its footing is in hiring. At least that's what stats may suggest at first glance. Unemployment levels are at record lows, and so the U.S. is rolling back its expanded unemployment benefits. But we want to take a better read on what those stats tell us, you know, like a really discerning look. So we've got Newsy national political correspondent Alex Miller, someone who has the range, here to give us a bit more detail on hiring and employment. 
Alex, uh, what do the current unemployment numbers tell us? So we're actually seeing the lowest unemployment numbers since September of 1969, which obviously sounds really great. But when you factor in things like seasonal adjustments and the certain patterns that we see for when layoffs typically happen, while this is obviously a very good situation, it's still not as good of a situation as the numbers themselves might suggest. And that really still has to do with COVID. People are still very concerned about Omicron. They're still very concerned about Delta. And they're just not applying for the, their jobs in the same numbers that we would have seen if we were a little bit further past the pandemic. And this is why you need you know, a, a very discerning look at the numbers because of a very, you know, brief look you know from somebody like me who's who's a novice to this it 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 all looks like good news but there's much more to um to be discussed here one of the things i'm curious about i mean how did the aid expansion impact unemployment numbers so it doesn't correlate the way that we saw lawmakers talking about over the course of the pandemic. When this aid was being handed out, we heard a lot of complaining up on Capitol Hill, particularly from Republican lawmakers who were saying that if this aid was gonna continue to be handed out, that we were gonna see people staying on their couch and not actually applying for jobs. And when this aid ended in the fall, we've been able to look at the data since then, and we're not seeing that correlate. We're not seeing people staying home because they had made uh, that money. And that is really the difference here. And the one other thing I would say is that mid-career employees are the ones that people are targeting right now. These are people ages 30 to 45 years old. They're the ones that are seen as less risky. They're the ones that are really getting to be a little bit pickier in the job market right now. Alex, another thing that we've heard um, throughout this year is uh, uh, great resignation. You know, that's been a term that's come up again and again and again, you know, as a way to really kind of like lay the foundation for understanding what we're seeing right now. What is the great resignation and what does that look like right now at this point in the pandemic now that we have these numbers to kind of uh, use as a reference base? Well, we're seeing a couple of reasons why we're having this great resignation. And a lot of it has to do, obviously, with the pandemic, but because jobs have changed, right? If you were working in hospitality or in retail, your job might not be the same because, for instance, if you worked in a restaurant, more people are ordering in, more people are on e-commerce websites. And so we're not seeing the same job requirements as we once were. So people can be a little bit more picky. The other thing is that employers are the ones that are now having to fight for their employees. It's not competition amongst employees the way that we would have traditionally seen. Employers are having to really make their jobs attractive in a way that they didn't used to. They're having to start at higher salaries. They're having to include benefits in some of these lower income jobs that maybe they wouldn't necessarily have done so because so many people of those mid level, uh, they're in the middle of their career, like we were talking about, they have been able to resign because they had either been waiting to resign or they know that they are much better suited for some jobs than maybe a younger employee might be because people are staying home still for work. Newsy national political correspondent Alex Miller. She does politics. She does labor. She does it all, folks. Alex, thank you so much for joining us.